With both the baker and the teacher sequences complete, we need to add sequences for our grocer as well. So let's repeat our steps. I'm going to just close these sequences. And in my asset browser, I'm just going to open up the sprites group, go to NPCs, and open up the grocer group that we made before. Now, if you're on Windows, you can go to File Explorer. If you're on Mac, you can go to the Finder. But let's go to that Assets folder that came with this course. And once again, we'll head to Sprites, Characters and Items, and we need to find the sprites for the grocer. So I'm going to click on all of these and drag them into the Asset Browser. Now, just as we did before, we've got a bunch of uh, animations that we need to process. So we just need to make sure the FPS speed is something a little more reasonable, such as 10. Let's change the origin point for each one so it's between the grocer's feet at ground level. And we can remove that suffix on the sprite name to keep things tidy. Once you've got all of your sprites organized, we're good to go. Now we need to create two more sequences. So once again, we could create all these sequences from scratch as we did before, or we can duplicate ones that we already have and go from there. I'm going to choose to duplicate them and save some time. So I will duplicate the happy teacher sequence and then go ahead and edit it. So in the asset browser, I'll right click on that sequence, choose duplicate, and we'll rename this to seq underscore grocer underscore happy. And I'm just going to double click that to make sure it's open. And we can go ahead and edit this. So remember, what we want to do is make a happy sequence for our grocer when we give him the item that he likes the most. So there is a happy sprite that you can drag in. And of course, there are four walking sprites that we can use and the different background assets. So using a combination of all those, let's make something fun. Okay, we have a happy grocer sequence that I really like. And let me just show you some things that I did. Here's how the sequence plays out. He does his dance and sort of moves back and forth. There's a few fun things that you'll notice I did. So there are actually two copies of his happy dance asset. You can see this one is sort of transparent and red. What I did was duplicate that track and I used the color multiply parameter track to do the same thing we did before. So I added a keyframe at the beginning, changed the alpha, but this time to just about the middle. But then I just played with some of the values here, specifically the saturation. And that gave it a color blend effect, which allowed it to look like this sort of red shadow following him. The next thing I did was you might've noticed that while I was working, I actually locked a few layers. So if you're ever working on something and you know, you're trying to drag something around or something is getting in the way, you always have this third column here in the track panel. And if you click it, you can lock a layer so you can't move it around. It could just gives you easier access to other things that might be close together on the canvas. And you can always just click that toggle again to unlock it. So I've got new music in as well. And one last thing to note is that I changed the length of the sequence. I changed it to 285 frames. Uh, but the one thing I had to make sure was that the second broadcast message that we put in, which was called sequence end, I just had to move that back to this last frame. Because if it's out of the sequence, it's not going to work uh, when we employ it. So you just need to make sure you have both those broadcast messages in as we've been doing the whole time. Now, the last sequence you need to create here is the sad one for the grocer. So let's go ahead and duplicate something. You know what? Let's just duplicate this one. We have the happy one because I like the length of that. The 285 frames will be good. So in the asset browser, I'm going to go to uh, the seq underscore grocer underscore happy sequence that we just made. We'll right click on that, choose duplicate. And let's rename this to seq underscore grocer 
underscore sad and double click it to make sure that's the one we've got open. Just gonna tidy up my tab at the top here. And let's go ahead and make a new sequence for when you give the grocer an item he doesn't want. So remember we have sprites that we can use here. There's an angry sprite, there's a sad sprite. I'll let you decide what you wanna use for that, of course. And there are the walking sprites if you wanna make him move a little more. Okay, we have our sad grocery sequence. I'll just play it here so you can see it with the music. So I didn't do anything too radical here. Um, I just had him walk in from the left side. And then I swapped the sprite here by adding a new sprite track for his angry animation. Just had him loop a little bit and then had his sad animation just sort of fade in at a couple different angles and uh, color multiply settings just so he would sort of do a color fade again like I did before for these color multiply settings I just played around with some of the RGB values and also the saturation value just so that it would blend a little bit differently than just being straight transparent like that just for something fun and then while that's fading out I swapped to his uh, walking right sprite and then just had him walk off the screen. So very simple, but that gives us two sequences for the grocer now. Once again, this is a uh, sequence that is 285 frames long, and you just need to make sure that you have your sequence start and sequence and broadcast messages in place. So with that done, that is all of our sequences, and we can go ahead and move on to the next step.